Hey everybody, Nick Dingle here with a brand new series for Unity 5 and this time around we're going to be going through the basics all the way up to using some of the extensions and some of the scripting. All right, I'm going to forget my old series because it's old, it's out of date and I don't really like it to be completely honest with you. And this video itself is for the people who have never ever really used Unity 5, they don't really know what it is and they don't know how to install it. So if you know all those things, please go into the next videos or maybe even the further ones because I'm going to take you through the very basics of Unity. For right now, let's have a look at how to download it and install it. So if you go to unity3d.com, it'll take you to the page you've been staring at for the last 30 seconds. We're going to hit the Get Unity button. Okay. And underneath the Personal Edition section, we're going to come down and hit Free Download. And then we get to the third page where we're going to click the download button. Now, if you're running Windows, the default settings are going to be fine. If you're running a Mac, please make sure you change the setting to a Mac OS X and we can hit the download. And what we actually download is what's called the Download Assistant. Now, I'll talk about that in a second, but for right now, if you're, if you're fresh to this, you'll need to create yourself a Unity account. So if you click on the little person on the top right of the page for Unity account, Make sure you click create account because what this does is it allows you to first of all license the software so you can use it that's pretty handy the second thing it does is it actually i never saw this before i'm just staring at it sorry what it actually allows you to do is buy and manage anything that you buy from the unity shop okay and that actually comes in really handy i've purchased a couple of things that i use every single project so i suggest create a unity account okay with your email password username and full name and then make sure you activate it and you're ready to go. So once you've got that set, let's start up the Unity Download Assistant. Yep. And this is where we download. Now, in the past, Unity has been one big download, okay, from the website. And actually, it's terrible. It doesn't work very well at all. So what we've got now is the Download Assistant. And it's pretty tiny. So let's get into it. So let's go next. I accept. And what these are, these are the different components that you can download and install to Unity, okay? So by default, Unity, Documentation, Web Player, Standard Assets, Visual Studio, and Windows Build Support have been ticked by default. Let me quickly take you through those. Unity is Unity itself, okay? It allows you to program things. The documentation, I would suggest you do it because it has the user manual and API reference, which if you're a programmer, hopefully you know what that means. Playmaker, or sorry, Playmaker, Web Player is just an old technology. It's a little bit outdated at this point, but it's probably a good thing to have since it's only seven meg. Standard assets are awesome because it comes with a ton of scripts, models, textures that you can use in your fresh games. Example projects is really good, I think personally to begin with, because it comes with a basic project. It's filled with scripts and players. It's a whole world that you can play around with and see how Unity actually works. So I'd recommend actually have a look at this example project and play around with it and break it, because that's the only way you can learn. Visual Studio is used for programmers. So if you're going to be programming and scripting, which I'm not going to be for a while in this video series, to be honest, then Visual Studio is the one to go with. Now, Unity actually comes with its own program for scripting. It's called MonoDevelop. It says that in the description, Unity Editor including MonoDevelop. However, MonoDevelop is really bare bones. It's really basic. And in fact, it's not that great. Okay. Visual Studio, I use every single day pretty much. It is fantastic. All right. And it's a very professional application and it's free. That's the other key factor. Now, you'll see the download size. It says three megabytes. However, if I untick it, watch the install space required down here goes down to 2.4 gigs. So Visual Studio is enormous, okay? So if you want it, have a good think about it because it's a big download, okay? I would recommend it, however, if you've got the uh, bandwidth to do it. Next, Windows Build Support. If you want to be able to make your game to play on computers, make sure you tick that. Or if you want any other platform supports like Mac or Linux or Windows Phone, tick those as well. And then when you're done, hit the Next button. All right, in this screen, you've got a couple of options here. So the first one asks you to specify a location of files downloaded during the installation. So your options are, it's gonna download them to a temporary spot and then delete them afterwards to try and save some space. Or you can specify a folder you wanna save them to. So that way, if you've got multiple computers you're gonna install Unity on, you can just copy them to a USB and move them around different computers. So I personally like this option better, okay? The next option, is where do you want to install Unity? And generally speaking, if you if you know where you want to put it, change the folder, but generally the default one's not too bad. I put it on my D drive because my C drive is quite small. So I'm going to go next, and this will be the download process of downloading all the files. Let's hit next again. Come on, mate. 
and now it's going to connect. Now, actually going to cancel for the moment because I've already got Unity installed. Yep, that's good. So what I'm going to ask you to do is pause the video right now, get yourself installed and all set up because it's going to be a pretty straightforward process from there. And I'm going to show you right now how it opens up for the first time. If I go down, I've actually got an icon on my taskbar here. However, it would create an icon on your desktop as well. And when you open it for the first time, it asks you for your Unity ID. So I'm going to cram in my Unity ID quickly. Good. And then we're going to sign in. Okay. And the second thing it's going to do is ask us what license we're using. So let's give it a second to load that up. Hopefully this works. All right. So if you're using the professional edition, you would have a serial key that you have to put in this box. However, we're using the personal. So let's hit that and go next. We agree. Of course we do. And then it's going to thank us, hopefully. We're going good. There it is. Okay. Once you've done all that, let's going to hit start Unity. And this is what you're going to see every time you open up Unity. You've got the projects tab, which is going to be all the projects you've opened and created. You're then going to have the getting started page if you want to go through the video tutorials. And some of these are actually really good. And it's not surprising, I guess, but they are a really good video series. And over on the right, you see you've got new for new project. We've got open if your project's not listed here. And then you've got your account details if you want to go and sign out into somebody else's account or manage your different account. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. The next video, I'm going to go through the standard project, okay? And we're going to be looking at navigating the interface and just moving around and playing with different things. And then the third project, we're going to be looking at creating our own projects. So thanks for watching, everybody. Give me some comments down the bottom, like, subscribes, whatever you feel like doing. But I'll see you in the next one. Ta for now.